Hello everyone, uh, I am Suman, I am from ICTS and uh, this is a uh, work going on in collaboration with Pinaki Choudhury from IMSC, Madan Rao from NCBS and Chandan Das Gupta from ICTS and IISC. So this is still an, uh, uh, some of the results that we have offset, uh, obtained very recently. Uh, on, uh, so the kind of results that we have obtained are some of the unusual, uh, unusual features of the liquid state uh, properties uh, in active matter systems which are very dense and also they, that, that show jamming. So I will try to summarize some of the uh, results that I have obtained and so the theme for today will be uh, very nicely illustrated in one of the pictures uh, that I got from Quanta magazine. So the theme would be, the, this, this is going to be the broader theme for today's talk. So you can see that uh, there is an emergence of the structure from uh, from disorder. So, so, so we'll start with the persistent athermal active matter, which was introduced in the uh, beginning uh, uh, in the morning session by Rajesh. So, and also I'll talk about uh, different uh, uh, the, the kind of models, molecular models that show cell jamming, and we'll touch upon uh, the uh, the complexity of active matter, and that is clubbed with the physics of glass here. So it's a very uh, difficult problem that we are trying and again to emphasize the focus will be the order in this the disordered landscape uh, uh, so and, uh, and, and, and also uh, uh, again uh, to refocus uh, the focus would be on the jamming di uh, dynamics of this kind of system. So to start things uh, with active matter, so this is this has been uh, quite discussed today and also from yesterday. So this, these are the bud flocks. Uh, some of the examples are the bud flocks. Also the school of fishes. And this picture also uh, uh, Shomriti discussed in the morning. Uh, so these are the self-propelled objects that actually converts energy into motion. And out of this active matter uh, genre, we'll take, uh, we'll focus on a particular uh, set of active matter which are athermal in nature. So that are not responsive to the thermal fluctuations and which are very dense. And also they are persistent, means the orientational uh, degrees of freedom are quenched. So some of the examples are the cells and the tissues which also uh, show some sort of glassiness. So the thing becomes are the athermal persistent active glassy matter. And the kind of glassiness that I want to uh, refer is the property of jamming. So jamming is basically uh, how, the, how things approach to a rigid and mechanically stable state. And this is uh, a movie uh, on cell jamming. So these are the cells. The cells obtained from the epithelial, uh, the, so these are epithelial cells from, uh, so this is called HBEC EC or the human bronchial epithelial cells that initially are in the liquid state and then you can see that their motion cheeses and at the end they are, uh, they, they actually, they get jammed. So a representative cartoon is this. So, so this is a jam state where you can see the cells, uh, cells do not, uh, the, the cells are not in the mobile state, but they only vibrate around their mean positions. And this is what an unjam state where things are mobile. So the kind of transition we are going to refer are initially those are at the at this unjam state, and how do they, uh, how how do they approach to the jam state? So this is the this is our problem. Uh, and recently, uh, not very recently, in 2019, the similar kind of jamming dynamics was uh, looked by Peter and their uh, colleagues, but not in the active system, but they looked into the passive jamming and, their, uh, and its root. So, so they start with some um, uh, liquid-like state and how it reaches to a jam state. This was the jamming dynamics in the absence of the active forces. Now, the question that we try to understand, what are, are, can these jamming states could be achieved in presence of activity or not? 
uh, Sharinton also referred to another kind of jamming in presence of the shear. So that was the shear jam states. So these are the passively jammed state and the, the another class of uh, jam state I'm going to refer are called the actively jammed state. Question is whether they have any distinct features or not. So one particular uh, result that they obtained was this power law decay. And the, the, we will try to address whether we'll get similar kind of behavior or not. So this is with increasing packing fraction. And also the route comes uh, through some heterogeneity. So these are the displacement maps. And you can see this world that has got some, some symmetry, which is very, uh, very much like the HLB events. So we'll try to look at the similar kind of dynamics in presence of activity. So our goal would be two things. First, we need to characterize the liquid state that we'll start with, and then we'll look into the dynamics uh, as, as, as things uh, get jammed. And some of the results earlier our group obtained, uh, they obtained this kind of phase diagram, and jamming was achieved in this infinite uh, toppy limit. So we'll, uh, we'll focus on this limit, so where the, uh, the persistence time is infinite, and we'll vary the F. So the system is a bidispersed system. So we have two different types of molecules, or uh, you can see um, particles, which uh, and every particle has got some self propulsion forces, which is F. So that's one uh, parameter for us. The jamming could be achieved by many other parameters, but for our problem, this is the only uh, parameter for us. This is the interaction between two particles and we have the friction. So the dig so one uh, again I'm emphasizing one uh, uh, one feature of this system is that the force directions do not change with time. So we don't have another another equation of motion for theta. So we'll start. Uh, so another result from our earlier uh, work from uh, earlier uh, earlier work. So what happens actually, this system actually shows fluidization beyond a force threshold. So, and this is, the, uh, this is how the kinetic energy increases with the active forces. So for certain values of the active force beyond a force threshold, so there is non-zero kinetic energy in the system. And this is one typical state uh, which I'm showing. So this is at F equals to three. So here you can see these particles are color coded with the velocities and lighter color are the particles has got higher mobilities. And what happens for this high uh, active forces, uh, the system with high active forces, if you quench the acti act active force, then actually what happens, it shows jamming. And so initially, so you can see this, uh, this state and then with time, you can see that some 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 uh, some activity you can see these are the kinetic bursts which is very similar to the plastic events and so there are multiple bursts this is the same system is shown in terms of the velocities and the uh, the active forces and the end state is a jam state which is a mechanically stable state so it's a completely force balanced state so we'll try to address what happens uh, to the length scales at this, uh, can we, is it possible to extract some kind of length scale in this state and the time scales associated with the jamming and is it possible to connect these two things? I have only five minutes. Okay, fine. Okay, so this is a route to jamming, and you can see that this is the initial state. What happens for uh, for f equals to zero? This goes down and it reaches to the jam state. And in presence of the activity and with increasing f, so the the the, uh, the dynamics changes, and there is some sort of plateau before it goes to the jam state. And for very high f, so it doesn't reach to the jam state within this observation time scales. So initial, and this is the different uh, uh, different cases. So initially, you can see this uh, the same state. These are the jamming uh, dynamics for different values of f. So f is equal to zero represents this one. F is equal to one represents this one, and f is equal to 1.65 uh, represents uh, this one. So this one is short-lived. 
and this one you can see that it's searching keeps keep on searching for minima and it takes uh, longer time to reach the minima so the system to system and run to run things change so there exists some sort of stochasticity in the in the time of uh, time to jam so for each of the values of the f so there exists a probability distribution of the time scale which shows like that and if one extract the mean jamming time scale so so this is the associated time to reach the jam state so uh, it uh, it grows this way with uh, with the active force magnitude so initially there is a divergence and then uh, beyond this uh, beyond the force threshold so there exists an exponential rise so which is very similar to this uh, recent results from shigan shastri's group so this is uh, very much like a fragile to uh, strong last transition and question might one question might be whether this has got any analogy or resembles to this one or not so this is and also this this dynamics has got a very strong system size dependence uh, this is for f equals to 0 for different system sizes so there so all the all of them goes to uh, uh, goes to the jam state but however the initial state is not identical for uh, different system sizes this is also uh, this is very much same for f equals to 1 and also we can see the similar kind of behavior in presence of the active forces so the time scale associated for all the cases if we now try to correlate the all the time scales with the system sizes uh, this is the picture this is in the log log plot so uh, this is how the time scale grows with the system sizes this is in in absence of the active forces this is in presence of the active forces so both as power loss only the uh, the slope changes so what happens to the initial state for the so we saw the difference in the initial state and this is what happens to the distribution of the initial state uh, states so these are the kinetic energy distributions for different system sizes which shows a shift with the increasing system size and this is the potential energy and this also shifts to the higher values uh, with increasing system sizes and this is the velocity correlation for the set uh, for all the system sizes which shows an increasing order with the system size now what order it represents to so you can see this swirls for different system sizes so these are the th this is a plot from uh, for n is equal to 4000 and this is from n is equal to 10000 you can see this uh, this swirls have grown so so this uh, increasing correlation are representative uh, might represent the this this the structure of this uh, this velocities this is also this has also been reported from uh, work from ludovic's group and we try to uh, connect this the increase in the correlation length with the system sizes and that grows in the power law fashion so the xi goes as root n so means this is uh, this is things have become critical and this uh, has this is the, the the correlation is growing with the uh, with the length this is uh, increasing with the l and this is the, the time scale and the length scale we are trying to correlate the time scale and the length scale so so in again both are power laws and only the exponents change so so the initial state that is actually determining the dynamics of jamming this is one result and this is for this is uh, some uh, sort of movie of the partial velocities the x component and y component of the velocities so this is the kinetic energy time series and this is the velocities and this is the total velocity and you can see those events and you can see this intermittencies prior to the jamming so we so these are the our main results uh, and again uh, this is a fluidation uh, dynamics and this is a jamming dynamics so you can see uh, these velocities and the correlated velocities which actually in the, in the process of jamming again shows some sort of activities uh, before it, it goes to this uh, mechanically stable state and summary uh, we can we can summarize the results so activity driven uh, dense liquid jams by lowering active force magnitude the jam state is a force balanced state the relaxation process is heterogeneous nearby the active force threshold 
We also saw the three stage relaxation, the initial short time decay and then we saw a plateau that has got, uh, uh, so uh, uh, there was a plateau the, that is representative of searching for minima and then uh, we had the relaxation within the minimum and the whole dynamics is governed by the initial state and its properties. So with this I am going to stop. Thanks. We have time for a couple of questions. So when you showed the video of your... Uh, oh, oh, which one? Uh, you had those bursts of activity coming out. I, I don't know if it was the one before this. Ha, huh, this one. Um, when you uh, yeah, if you see the video, so is I was curious, is the dynamics facilitated in this? Maybe I've asked you this before. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, maybe then I'm coming back to the same. No. So, so we are trying to understand these uh, events and uh, how does uh, means the local uh, uh, the spatial relaxation of the local quantities like the stresses and those things we are trying to understand, and uh, but. Uh, Again, uh, this is this is a very difficult problem. We need to understand. We need some time to understand. Any other advice, sessions? So for your velocity correlations, how does the length scale scale with n? Is it just linear system size, or is it something more complicated? Uh, so this is this xi goes as root n. So it means with the this is going with l. This is okay. in two D. Right. Okay. And what's the, is there a dynamic exponent between length and time, and what, what is the ratio of the exponents? Uh, this one? So That's you have an exponent for length and for time, so I was curious what the dynamic exponent is, the, the ratio of the two. Ratio of, of the, the... Length and the time scale exponent. Ah, okay, okay. So, these are, so the exponents we have uh, figured out, so this is tau j and this is log of xi. So the exponents for in presence of the active force in, in the absence of active forces the slope is close to one, okay. and in uh, when uh, in presence of the active force this is five this is for f equals to one. Now it will be dependent upon the values of f. Okay. Because as you are going away from the threshold or close uh, clo close to the threshold, uh, it will determine it will determine the time scale to jam. Okay. Thanks.